everyone, it's Sako MC here and welcome to this step-by-step -step tutorial. So for this video and this specific painting, um, I decided to make a voiceover slash tutorial long version. There's also a short version for this painting. If you want to check out the time-lapse video, I will put the link in the screen. But for this specific version, uh, instead of putting just random music, I decided to do a voiceover and explain to you my process and how I create my paintings because I mostly use the same colors, I use the same tools, so I think it can be nice if I just explain how you can mix watercolors, copic markers and, and color pencils because it really gives beautiful results when you mix tools. I do enjoy working with only watercolors or only copic markers or only colored pencils but those are my top three main use like tools and this is also the tools that I prefer using and I really enjoy using them so I just really like mixing them because I can enjoy every way of coloring I guess so I hope you will enjoy this video and I'm gonna try to explain to you how I create my artworks so the first thing that I do of course is sketching I usually sketch on a really small uh, size paper. I usually, it's a really really tiny sketch and just like doodling and like creating some basic lines and just figure out what's the main compositions and stuff, organizing or uh, like organize the drawings. But this is really depending on your topic. So um, I didn't put this part in the paintings because in the video because I don't think it really matters. It's just the way I do things, so it doesn't really it differs from a lot of people. I know some people like to sketch directly on their actual finished piece, like if I sketch directly on this paper, for example. But I don't really like that um, because I mess up all the time and I really often redo a sketch and redo a painting. So this is why I just prefer to have a clean sketch and then I basically usually trace it with my Comic LED Master uh, light table or light tracer and then I do my clean um, outlines usually I try to use if I use watercolors I just I tried something new for this painting I've used a water-based uh, color liner and it's actually a light gray and once I've started painting, the, um, the 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 colors mix together, and all the all the gray lines, they kind of like blend, you know. So you don't have to worry if you mess up some lines, and if you like want to change some parts of your drawings, it's okay because this is since it's water based. Um, that means you kind of easily fix it, you know. So after this part if, is finished, usually it takes me around 30 minutes or so to do like all the lines. I do a major step is protecting my paper. This weird grayish thing is drawing gum. It's like a plasticky uh, thing. It's liquid when you paint, like use it as a paint. And when you put this on paper, it dries and it's kind of like repulsing water, which means that every part of your painting that is underneath is going to be protected. So I put that and I let it dry. When it's dry, I finally start painting with watercolors. I have two boxes. One box is of like, is Winsor & Newton watercolors, which are a bit more high-end and high-quality watercolors. The other box is Van Gogh watercolors, which is more like a steady kind of brand. It's like a medium um, hand brand. And I use this a lot of for backgrounds and certain colors, but I mostly use Winsor & Newton. For this painting, I also use inks. You can see like those little bottles on the screen. This is uh, Colorex ink. I've also used Sennelier ink. And all this red, really red um, colors are from inks because, and also the pink on the bottom is from inks because they are really deep concentrated, like very um, saturated in things. So, uh, so I use also inks. Now, what I usually do, and this is related to my watercolor tutorial. I, by the way, I will put I will put the part two and three really soon. But what I like to do is just working on the main 
um, like on the main picture. I try to work several colors and lay down several colors depending on the ambience that I want. I wanted a really bright, colorful um, image, kind of like reminds me of like uh, clowns and a really bright pictures, you know. So I decided to avoid too many colors and I tried to, se I basically selected mostly yellows, reds, and a bit of purple and of course some pinks but they're like I've decided to just start, don't use too many greens because I didn't want to, I didn't want rainbow art this way so after my first layer of colors I usually don't let it um, dry I go again and enhance everything now to enhance what you want you have to define the, like the light source and everything that goes in the opposite direction is gonna be darker but when you draw something, it doesn't have to be really uh, that precise, you know, because I actually, I'm faking reality here because there's a lot of graphic designs involved and like a lot of floral and lines and a lot of flat elements. And if you think about it, um, there is no possibility that this artwork is nowhere near uh, because the light source car are coming from different directions. So. Uh, and there's like lines on top of it, so it doesn't really matter as long as you just keep the shapes. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but it's really hard to explain exactly how I do it. I just want the, um, the image to pop, so you have to make sure when you color things with watercolors to work with the, um, with the whites and the lights in the paintings. So you can have like different layers and background and the uh, and foreground and all these different layers in the paintings to have some um, some parts of the paintings needs to be away from you and some parts needs to be in front of you this is how you're gonna create depth and to like the I guess the best way to do that is work in black and white first so if you haven't checked this you should definitely check my black and white tutorial because working in black and white is the best way to work on values and how to bring up or bring away from you different kinds of features or different kind of objects and this is how you work in 3D basically you have to I don't know it's just a matter of, of balancing things and creates some um, I guess like focusing areas it's nice when your eyes are traveling in the paintings uh, and you have like kind of like a major point like when you just you 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 will attract the eye of the of of the spectator like of the people who are watching it and there are some areas and the eye needs to travel and like find more details on like it depends like you can have just one face in the middle of a of it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to have a lot of things in a drawing but when i do my paintings whether it's uh, complex or it has a lot of things inside or it's just simpler and has just one face or just no background it's just you have to find the main topic you have to find um something in the painting that's going to attract people and you have to focus on that or you can just work your way around and create details everywhere so you your eyes will travel and follow lines and what I like to do is something that I've learned in school but you can definitely learn this on your own it's working with force lines and I've talked about it in my hair tutorial force lines is basically creating um, like how you will picture the movement of the paintings there's hair there's wind there's like some uh, lines and round lines and flowers and I've tried to balance everything and when I create my basic lines I don't really understand how it's gonna ha like how it will look so coloring is the only way for me to push the boundaries and have very dark spots very bright spots which is exactly what I do I try to work my way from my light source and you can definitely see on the painting that on the center and our, our face is the bright side and all around it I'm trying to go deeper and create that background layer that I've talked about and any every dark in the painting is gonna be like you are going inside the painting it's like it's further and all the bright parts is gonna be in front of your face basically and this is why if this is how you're gonna make your painting really pop I guess 
and not so flat looking. And this is a really hard process. It requires a lot of practice and a lot of, um, I guess you have to have some, um, I don't know how you can pronounce, like, I don't know how I can describe that, but as I told you, working black and white is the, is the best way. I tried to, I practice a lot in black and white. I work with like China ink and uh, color and like just pencils and everything like that is the best way to work on values and how you kind of create 3D in a painting. So this is mostly watercolors. Now that my basic um, ambience is created, I removed all this drawing gum and all this plastic thing. I just use a rubber uh, eraser and then I'm grabbing my Copic markers because I don't really like how it looks with only watercolors. Um, but you have to be careful if you switch to Copic markers, there is basic rules. First of all, it has to be dry. It, it's not obvious, but it has to be completely dry. Second of all is when you uh, start with Copic markers, you can actually go on top of it with watercolors again. But if you put too much, it depends on the paper, but I realized that after, I'd say after three or four coats, depending on how, like, like for example, two coats of watercolors and two coats of Copic markers, the paper is completely saturated and you it can't uh, absorb any more ink. So this is your uh, like non return. Uh, you, you you can't go. You can't come back from that. When you reach down the limits of the painting of the painting, <laughs> when you reach down the limits of the of the paper, you're gonna have to switch to colored pencils. You can't put more colors with Copic markers or watercolors. So I did my basic. Usually what I do is my basic coats, my basic color with watercolors because it's gonna have a really smooth. Um, coloring and really like uh, yeah just a, a smooth easy coloring and doesn't have it doesn't use a lot of inks so I'll use watercolors and then I'm enhancing everything with Copic markers the reason I use the Copic markers is because they base first of all they blend really easily with watercolors they also give a beautiful um, kind of like a, a cloudy texture I don't know if it may make, makes any sense but if you look at the painting up close and like in real life there's something really smooth, but you can also do sharp lines and they just blend really, really well with watercolors. This is why I really like mixing them. I usually go on the face with Copic markers. I don't really work a lot with watercolors on the face because it's really easy to mess up. I'd rather have my, my because I'm used to Copic markers um, brush hairbrush effect, I guess, without actually using the airbrush effect, but it's just easier to handle and it just blends really well and of course it's gonna bleed with papers with the paper so you have to make sure that it doesn't bleed too much but what I like about this paper first of all you maybe maybe you're wondering what paper you should use um, I'm using different kinds of watercolor paper the what you have to do is make sure you don't use any kind of like really high absorbing paper like the arch paper for example, by Canson, they they drink basically. They just drink the ink and they bleed a lot. And it's really hard to work with that. It doesn't mean you don't have you can't work with it. It just means it, it's going to it's going to use a lot of ink. And you're gonna have basically why Copic markers is mixing really well with Copic with watercolors is because of that bleeding process. That bleeding process means it's gonna soak into the paper and. And it basically works like watercolors because the watercolors is gonna soak into the paper and kind of bleed. It, watercolor basically bleeds into the paper, and Copic markers are doing exactly the same, which means that every line is gonna be really soft and blends and melt into the watercolors. And also, what I like about Copic markers is that the ink is translucent; it's not opaque. When you lay down a color, it's gonna mix with the color underneath. If I lay down like like a blue on on a pink base, like what I that I did with watercolors, it's gonna be purple. If I lay down like I don't know, like a light blue on a yellow, it's gonna end up green. If I basic layering process that you are 
experimenting with Copic markers is going to be exactly the same if you lay them on top of watercolors. It's all about layering and creating more depth gradually. For example, on my darker spot, I've put the base with watercolors and then I come again with Copic markers to work again on what I've talked about, that 3D layer. You have to picture your drawing like like a, like a hallway, you know, like all the dark layers are in the background and like in the background of the hallway, really far from you. And all the light parts are the first thing that you see, the close, like the things that are really closer to you. And when you think that way, it's making you really just help. It really helps to to go inside the drawing. And I really just like doing that. Every time I create something, it really, it's just, it, it's really flat. And then it comes to life because I think about, oh, I think about that 3D all the time. And it's a really hard process. And it took me a while to, um, to have, it's just, it's a, you have to learn and to train your your eyes seeing that and um if you want to create that depth you don't have to but if you want to create that depth this is the way you're gonna achieve that is by working in different layers and i think cg art computer artworks are a really great way um to do that because you you have layers when you work on computer also and it just helps working in different uh, yeah, different layers. I mean, <laughs> um, I didn't talk about all the colors I've used. I didn't really tell you how to color because this is not. It's first of all, it's kind of impossible <laughs> to describe because the the way to color with Copic markers is pretty um, easy. I mean, like it doesn't. You don't have. You just have to practice. It's all about like how you press and how much color you put and how many colors you put it's all about layering and one marker can do like three to four coats and it's gonna change the colors every time so it's really hard to balance how much you put especially with watercolors because I basically I had to buy new markers and really light colors because even the lightest colors if you lay them on watercolors they are really dark. You may think that one color is super light if you put this on a blank page, but if you put this on a really light watercolor base, it's I I end up with a too like the color is too dark, so I have to I just think like oh I'm gonna grab like my E zero zero for the skin tone, and I realize that it's way too dark. Okay, let's let's grab my E three zeros. It's too dark. So I have to use like the really, really light colors and then I gradually get the darker colors, but I don't use a lot. If you look like all the markers on this video, there's a lot of medium and light colors, not a lot of dark. And um, the last thing, well, not the last thing, after working like with um, copy markers, I switched to my color liners and I've I'm using the um, what's it called? The Tripless Fine Liner by Stedler. And those liners are amazing and they work really well. They have tons of colors and you can probably find them in a lot of craft store. I highly recommend them. They are water-based marker, which means that they can blend easily if you work with watercolors. You can actually um, put a bit of water and kind of like blend them together if, if you want. So they are really great. I tr I try to use, um, I sometimes use black, but for this painting, I decided to use a dark purple. purple. I used a dark purple because that was the color that was going to go and and like blend easily with every other colors. Purple was going like, went well with the red. It goes well with the blue. It goes well with the pink. It goes well with the yellows. And it has a bit of texture and a nice contrast with the green. So I've used purple. If my main color was around like, I don't know, if, if it was green and brown, purple still goes. Uh, it This color is like a deep, dark, 
grayish purple it goes with everything so I've chose this color yes um, the last thing that I that I do on painting so the line art part here is a really long process and it's hard it's easy to mess up at that stage because as I told you you have created the depth you know where you like main parts bright parts dark parts you are your eyes are already traveling what you need is to um, I guess like finish the process and add more sharper and hedginess because all the watercolor copic markers process is really smooth looking and what I like and what I do and I can't just leave it in that stage I will I can do more sharp lines with watercolors but it's really tricky I really just like working a bit more with sharp lines so this is why I use color liners and in this I'm basically adding details and like any kind of lines that's gonna help creating that depth and that hedginess how can I describe that it's all about um, creating tiny tiny lines in some like on her hair or like doing some outlines on the flowers or creating textures um, and patterns and all this stuff it's just about um, yeah it's just about creating something sharp and uh, and adding more details and it's really just like it it keeps changing every time I do something um, I didn't picture that when I sketched it and if I look at my sketch it's not exactly like that I didn't really think about what lines I'm gonna do or like how many lines what's the size of the lines I didn't really think about that it's just on the on the moment you know when I'm doing it I just yeah let's put a line here and sometimes I mess up and I try to fix it and there's a lot of mistakes or happy accidents <laughs> and like um, some things I wish I didn't do there's some things I wish I did you can't really decide that you can't really predict like how the drawing is gonna live on its own and the process is changing all the time and usually you end up with something that you didn't plan um, but yeah it's a really f um, long process I can't say it's hard because I've did a lot of drawings like that and a lot of paintings so I'm used to the process but it's still hard because every time I make a decision I have to make sure it's the right decision bef because if I made it if I just did if I do the things if I do it it's over because that there's no coming back when you do this on paper but yeah um, the face is and the eyes are always the last thing that I do because it's really brings the character to life and um, I'm always using colored pencils because this is the only way for me to have a really sharp precise lines especially on her eyebrows and yeah I just really like that then as I told you when you are done with Copic markers if you want to add more you have to use colored pencils and when you use colored pencils this is the last step before adding highlights because you can't put um, colored pencils as a waxy dry finish and you can't put more copics on top it's gonna clog up the nib it's really bad for your copic markers so make sure that if you want to mix up tools you have to make the use the colored pencils last what I do with colored pencils every time I use colored pencils I just grab lighter colors a light yellow a light blue and usually a light, a, like light pink sometimes and I just had highlights back into the dark areas on her basically if you look on her face the shadows are on the right but I wanted to add a bit more and bring more light and like some I guess some highlights so I use light blue just on the edge just to bring up a bit more depth on her face I also use a light blue to bring up more lights in some dark areas on flowers just to help as I told you just create sharp sharpness hedginess depth it's all about balancing the colors and it's just it, it creates depth I can't really describe it more 
but sometimes if you put two, it's like picture that hallway again and you you picture like this dark layer in the in in the in like um really far away from you this dark layer is like really just far away in the in the bottom of the hallway in bottom but yeah behind like really far from 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 you and when you had back a bit of light it just brings it back to you and this is how you're gonna make um the layers kind of mix you know and you this is how you're gonna keep traveling back and forth in a painting and i really like when it just brings back the light and it just creates like every time i do my highlights i use um color pencils and then i use um a white liner and and the face and my like hairlines or like any kind of accent it just brings the character to life and the painting somehow even though you work on the depth before all those highlights is gonna be really like help the process of making it popping and i really just like that process and it's always the same i just finished with highlights and then i'm adding some accents here and there i also used um a gold liner and just really had I just had a lot of fun making this I hope you enjoy uh, if you have any questions if you want me to explain a bit of more uh, of the process or make another video I will gladly do it I hope you enjoy and yeah thank you for watching guys and we'll see you soon bye bye